guys. Uh, how are you doing? Everyone? Good. Thank you. Okay, so travel is and has always been the first love of my life. Now it's my wife and daughter, but um, I've been traveling across India, Asia, across the world for a, for a while now. And, but my journey of travel started at quite a young age. Um, I remember probably even as early as the age of three. I don't remember everything vividly, but I do remember the excitement of traveling. The car journeys, the vada pows on the road, and in general, just a warm, fuzzy feeling that I must admit, I get every time I travel even now. When I was in standard 10, or just graduated from BIS, my father made a deal with me. He told me, Harsh, I'm gonna give you a return ticket from Bombay to Chandigarh and back, and I'm going to give you 10,000 rupees. And the return ticket, the difference of the time was around 15 days. And he said, you have 15 days in this much money. If you finish the money earlier, you have to figure out a way to come back home. And he kind of challenged me to do that. And that was probably the first time I traveled on my own or with one friend of mine. And that taught me a lot. And I had an absolute blast on that trip. I'm gonna give a few instances of how much fun we had on that trip. So we stayed at some really bad places. Imagine bed bugs, wet cloths to sleep on. And after like a few days of doing that, we kind of got really tired of it. So we made friends with a local guy who was um, at a dhaba eating with us. And uh, we kind of got to know him and spoke to him. And he said uh, he's a caretaker of a villa where MLAs live in. Um, so we were like, oh, nice. That sounds like a nice place. So we were like, uh, can we come and see it? And he was like, sure, sure. So he came and showed us the place. And we were like, oh, we would love to stay here. He's like, no, no, I'm not allowed to do that. Fortunately for us, uh, not maybe all the kids close your ears, but we had taken a bottle of rum with us. And uh, we gave it to him. And, and he said, OK, sure, why don't you stay here for the next few days? <laughs> so it taught you how to negotiate, right? <laughs> um, we hiked a lot. We trekked a lot. We walked almost everywhere. Um, and we just explored the wonders of Himachal. Uh, those were the days when internet wasn't that big. Can you imagine that, any of you guys? I doubt it. Uh, imagine going to a place not knowing where you're going to go next. Imagine going to a place from point A to point B where you don't have Google Maps. Surprise, surprise. Um, but honestly, it was just so much fun asking for directions, mingling with locals, and just, in general, making new friends from all walks of life. Um, and the biggest thing for me was um, we kind of sheltered here in BIS a little bit. So it was accepting that not everything would go my way, but still have a good time while doing it, right? And obviously, the biggest thing it taught me was patience, which is very useful now with a wife and daughter. Uh, after this trip, my wanderlust just exploded, and I traveled all over India. I flew, I drove, I took the train back, I backpacked across India, and I was hungry for new experiences. And I just absolutely loved traveling in India. I'm patriotic like that. <laughs> Every inch was stunning in its own way. Whether it was the temple, waterfalls, desert, palace, green fields, cityscape, whatever it is, my logic was why travel to a foreign country when India has so much to offer. When I went abroad to study, my love for India was apparent because that's all I could talk about with all my friends. And every single person I met always told me, I wish I could travel to India someday. I wish I could travel to India someday. That's when I decided to form my company, India, someday. Me and my team worked on ways to get foreigners to visit India and fall in love with the country like I did. At India Someday, we started catering to the international tourists back in 2011. The internet had started back then, but curated or personalized trips was not really a big deal. It was always the larger package tours that were being offered. So we, with all the knowledge that we had gained over our travels, obviously took that and customized it and started selling it to these foreigners. Um, it also helped me cater to their personal and traveling styles. Now, of course, people find out today about where they want to visit by following influencers on Instagram, and people already know which place they want to eat at or visit or explore. And they explore the history of a tourist spot by Wikipediaing it. The charm of discovering something new is what people seek but struggle to find. Looking back at the 80s, the idea of travel was to visit friends and family in their hometowns. And coming post-economic liberation, that kind of move to 
the big agencies like Thomas Cook and SOTC that came in and started selling packages. And in the early 2000s, the demand for individual trips increased as families moved from joint families to individual households. And now, everyone travels towards experiences and what they love to do. I know someone here that really likes food. Um, even my traveling style has changed. I have a wife and child now, as I repeat multiple times. And they prefer slightly more comfortable holidays than I was used to. So I've also had to adapt. Um, but it is still venturing into a city and trying to get a pulse of it without always just being on the phone. The marketing changes in, thus in the industry have also kind of improved a lot. It has gone from having retail offices in clusters to being largely digital. From being present on Google using SEO to using influencers as affiliates on social media. It's my assumption that over the next few years, influencers and the way Instagram is, is going to change the travel industry considerably. As of today, a lot of people like to ape an influencer's trip. They like to do the same trip that their favorite blogger or influencer has done. And that trend is quickly converting into a business where influencers use experiential companies like ours to tie up with and kind of sell their trips to and use us as the logistics backend provider. So just moving on, um, the big question that I have with these changes, has travel changed from being exploratory to just being ticking off a list? Or is there anything that will remain unknown or only found by a few because everything is so easily available online? Or will this transparency lead to an increase in creating new travel destinations? It's a, it's a question which I haven't answered yet and I would love to hear from you guys later on if you have any thoughts on that. The Indian travel industry is expected to grow to approximately 80 million travelers by 2040. This means all you guys here are future travelers and my future clients. So it is an extremely interesting time to be in this industry. The next 10 to 15 years is probably the best time to enter it. The era of large companies having all the control has tremendously reduced. We at India Someday are a prime example of this. A small player who came in with 16,000 rupees capital and changed the norm as business models, understood the change in the consumer mindset and capitalized on that. On a personal level, even though we may not need to go on foot and ask around directions anymore or take long road trips, I want my daughter to grow up like I, ha I did, with an appetite for travel and <laughs> love for exploration. The possibilities are endless. So whether you want to be a travel influencer or work in the travel industry or just have a love for travel, you are going to be a part of the evolution of this industry. And I can guarantee from personal experience, you won't regret it. Thanks so much, Harsh. I think you've certainly whetted our appetites for travel. Does anybody, oh, there's a question there. Can she have the mic, please? Yeah, thanks. Hi, thank you. Hi. So I have a question. Uh, you know, there's so many hidden paths in India, right, that we don't actually get to access very easily. And in COVID, I think a lot of people traveled in India more. But one big problem I found was that it's a lot government regulated and it's not well maintained. So even if you want to go somewhere, access becomes difficult, Inf lack of information is an issue. Any thoughts or any work you've kind of done around that? So it's, it's true, but it's changing quite rapidly from, from both fronts, right? Over the last 10 years, we've seen a lot of growth in infrastructure in general. And because there hasn't been a demand from the, from the Indian consumer in general for places in India. For example, most people here on a summer holiday would never travel in India. They would all be abroad or everyone would be traveling. Or even if you want to ski, people wouldn't go to Gulmarg earlier. They would always go to Switzerland, right? So the demand didn't exist. And post-COVID, what's happened is a lot of Indians are now willing to explore India. So over the last four years, you've seen a big jump in the number of hotels and infrastructure being developed. It's obviously going to take time, but it is happening. Um, you'll see a lot more hotels coming up in Gulmarg, a lot more hotels coming up, just as an example, right? A lot more hotels coming up across India. So even if you take Arunachal Pradesh, for example, all the way up there, the roads are a lot better now. It's a lot easier to get there than it was 10 years ago. It's still difficult, but it's, it's a lot easier than it used to be. 
um, and uh, the thing is, India is still very raw compared to the rest of the world. Uh, and But that's also the beauty of it. So if you're willing to accept that beauty, uh, then it's a lot easier to travel here. But it is improving. Uh, one quick question there. We, we're running out of time, so we'll keep it brief, please. Hi, I want to ask about ethical travel to a lot of these far off remote places because now people are getting aware about um, like when you take a bottle of shampoo with you, you don't just throw it, you know, in Spiti Valley because they don't have waste management systems there. So how do you advise your, your clients to be sustainable like travelers, um, especially in these remote places where there's, as you said, little infrastructure? Yeah. Yeah. So so there are small things that we do as an agency to begin with. Um, for every customer of ours, we plant five trees. That's the first step that we take, that we have taken. We've been doing this for around five years now. And we encourage our clients to plant five trees also. Um, the second thing that we do is kind of give everyone at least a glass bottle in the car and the option to fill it up at the hotel so that they have that bottle for the rest of their trip, even if they haven't gotten it. So you have to take these baby steps with it. And in places like Spiti and Himachal, and as you said, the, there are certain challenges which are going to take longer to solve, um, which is India being the one rupee market, as I call it, where everything is quick and reusable and a lot of plastic because of that, because you have so many people who, that want smaller packets. That is a little hard to get around, but the hotels help with not keeping those small bottles anymore and having refillable bottles and things like that, which, which have started and are progressing quite rapidly. But we can do our small part by kind of being more sustainable ourselves and using a lot more local people. That's, that's the first step. Thanks very much, Harsh. A big round of applause, please, for Harsh.